This is One on One. We're here with uh, Dr. A.M. Barrett, who is Director of Stroke Rehabilitation Research at Kessler Foundation. We're here at a terrific conference uh, in West Orange, New Jersey, Life After Stroke Innovations and Research, Reclaiming Life and Regaining Independence. Doctor, we've talked many times in the studio, uh, but the question is, this particular issue, this conference, why significant? We're going to talk today about how problems, not only the problems you can see, but the problems you can't see affect people after stroke, how it can limit their lives and how we can make them better. Such as? After stroke, the GPS in our brains that tells us where things are can be broken. It can give us the wrong information. But almost never do we find out that we have this problem after stroke, and almost never do we get the treatment. So we're trying to address that in the Kessler Foundation. Yeah, you may see around the doctor's neck, and she brought this in the studio. Um, we were taping a program, and, and she brought these goggles in the studio, and they are called Prism adaptation goggles. Say it again? Optical prism goggles. Okay. And they are particularly for a particular kind of ailment that people uh, deal with after stroke, which is called? Spatial neglect. Talk about spatial neglect and then talk about the goggles. Mm -hmm. Well, when people have had a stroke that affects the right brain, we all know that the right brain is supposed to be kind of creative and innovative. Well, this right brain tells us where our bodies are at all times, right? So you've seen me do this demonstration before. When I put on my glasses with my eyes closed, I can do it because my right brain knows all the coordinates and knows how to make the movement. But what can happen when somebody has spatial neglect is they lose that ability. And what's interesting is when you make these kind of mistakes, people don't say, oh, the person has had a stroke. There's a problem going on in her brain. Instead, they think, oh, you know, she's not trying. She's got some kind of issue. What does that person see? That person is seeing the world in a different way than you and I are. And when they wear these goggles that change what they see, you know, you can see that the goggles have a, 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 a curve on them, a surface curve, and they change where you see things so that the distortion in the world is corrected. It corrects the distortion? Yes, so if you make movements while you're wearing these goggles, you can actually reprogram the way that your vision and your movement systems work together. Talk about the economics of this. How much, no, how much they cost? Sure, oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, you can see that they're really, really expensive, right? <laughs> not. They are... Um, they're not. Right, exactly. These, these are cheaper than an exercise bicycle. They're cheaper than a whirlpool, you know, for people to sit in to relax their muscles. Um, and it takes about a day to train somebody to use them, a therapist to use them. So it's not something that's extremely labor-intensive either. They fit into the therapy schedule, especially in the inpatient hospital setting. But most people just aren't comfortable with them. Medicine as a field and rehabilitation as a field moves kind of slowly on the speed of trust. And so we have to help people to trust these goggles that have been scientifically supported. So that's really the whole idea. As I said, I'm pointing to the sign over here if you're wondering what I'm pointing at. That's the research. Innovation, right? Exactly. That's exactly right. We're trying to show with research from the laboratory, but also research from people's real lives, you know, how can we get these goggles into people's hands? As you say, how can we get something that's inexpensive, and even it saves money for the system, for the how? hospital? It can cut the amount of time, we think, in our kind of initial uh, activities, the amount of time that people actually have to spend in the hospital. And that's because, let's say that your movement system were distorted, you might fall. Then you're in the hospital for an extra three, four days. You might have trouble getting up and using your walker. Well, if you can learn that a day sooner, you can get home a day sooner. So in many ways, this conference tonight, uh, we're at Kessler Foundation's conference, Life After Stroke. Uh, Dr. Barrett's been with us before, but we're really moving forward in this uh, process of trying to understand life after stroke. You're saying if more people had access to these goggles, there's the potential to not only make people better, improve the quality of life, but reduce healthcare costs. That's what we hope, and that's what we're about to try to do with a group of hospitals across the country. Real quick question before I let you out of here. Um, you're so fascinated by life after stroke because? Well, I think that I was always interested in how the brain changes, but people stay the same. And so people can have what do you mean by that? problems. Well, so this is a, it's a really philosophical question you've asked me. And I think that what really inspires me is you see people whose brains are really different and who do things so differently, right? But these people, in a very essential way, are exactly the same as the rest of us. They're exactly the same. And so when, I'm, when I met and was able to, tonight we have a lot of people who are, have these kind of hidden disabilities with us tonight. And we see really not just that they're courageous and they have spirit, but they, they really are are us. 
And when something is us, we have to do something about it. And we have to hear them, listen to them, under, try to understand them. Yes, exactly. And we have to be part of that, what they're doing. Thank you, Dr. Barrett. Thank you, sir. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Valley National Bank, Passaic County Community College, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Give Something Back Foundation, New Jersey Sharing Network, ShopRite Supermarkets, and by Choose New Jersey. Promotional support provided by Commerce Magazine. And by HipNewJersey.com. Live hard, work hard, play hard. You're from New Jersey, and so are we. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.